Hello, everybody, and welcome to Camp Hacker TV. My name is Travis Allison. I'm uh, super excited today to be sitting down via Skype with Dr. Chris Thurber. Chris, welcome to Camp Hacker. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> and it's great to have you on another Camp Hacker video. Yeah. I um, I want to start today. Well, Chris, I want to come back around to expert online training, which I think is very relevant. One of the big things you do at this time of the year. But yeah. um, I'd like to start with your camp story and just hear how you got involved in summer camp from yeah, what your sure. beginnings were. Okay, well, I grew up in Maine, and uh, of course there are a lot of camps in New England. My parents first uh, got me connected with a day camp when I was four, and I went there for a couple of years. Um, tried actually a couple of different day camps, including uh, Portland Sports Camp, and uh, then my best friend headed off to overnight camp, unbeknownst to me, so I, I missed him a great deal uh, the summer when we were 11 years old, um, after, I guess, fifth grade. Um, and... Um, uh, when he came back, I said, so, you know, Mike, where have you been? And he said, well, I went to this great camp. And I thought, well, I'm not sure if I'm ready for overnight camp. But, but because my best friend was going, I think that, uh, you know, my experience was uh, great confidence and um, great joy that I attended my first overnight camp experience. And uh, that was at Camp Belknap on Lake Winnipesaukee in central New Hampshire. And this will actually be my 32nd summer there. So yes. I was a camper and came up through the ranks of the leadership and uh, and have been the waterfront director there now since uh, 1989. So I think something a lot of people um, don't know about me is that my most important qualification is not my graduate degree or anything else. It's just my um, time at camp and I'm still doing it, still living the dream. What um, Going back year after year, what is it that draws you back? Oh, uh, that's a good question. You know, the, the staff are a bit different every year, of course, and so the different personalities and the different challenges make that interesting. But I think like a lot of people who are going to be listening to this, I keep thinking I'm going to refine, you know, what it is that I do, figure out um, better, safer, more fun ways to run the waterfront or improve this piece of equipment so that it doesn't break as often. Um and the primary reason is is interpersonal. It's just a great joy for me to be at camp, to interact with these boys um, and the fabulous staff that we have at Belknap. I think, you know, what most people would say is the reason they go back to camp is the people. And, um, you know, the people are just a constant source of, of energy and creativity. And I, you know, from September to May, Travis, I'm, I'm at a boarding school, a co-ed boarding high school here in New Hampshire, yep. working as a psychologist. And... You know, I don't see a representative cross-section of, of students here at Phillips Exeter Academy. I see the ones who are struggling the most, um, and that's my job as a clinical psychologist. Uh, but after, you know, nine months of treating anxiety and depression and eating disorders and substance use problems, I'm, I'm ready to switch gears, you know, and put on my bathing suit and teach swimming and sailing and water skiing and, and lifeguarding. And you know, that's, it's just for me, it's a great way to keep everything fresh. I think by the time the summer ends, yeah, I'm pretty excited I'm to return to Phillips Exeter. Uh, by the time the school year ends, which it's about to, I'm, I'm raring to go for camp. So to me, you know, the year just has a wonderful rhythm to it. And I'll say one other thing, too, which is that my work as a clinician informs my work, you know, as a camp leader right. and vice versa. So it's these are complementary professions. And um and very energizing. Well, I, I'm glad you say it's energizing because I can picture being exhausted because I know that <laughs> that first week of September, I feel like just sleeping. And yeah. At that point, you're no, going what back is, to school. What is exhausting is, is being a dad. What oh. is exhausting <laughs> is being a parent. But that's also my greatest source of joy. So, yeah. uh, how, uh, how do your kids like camp? Oh, they love it. Um, so my boys are seven and nine. Oh. And Dacha, my oldest son, was a camper for the first time for two weeks last summer. And I'll say this to all of the, the camp directors out there and those of us uh, who work at camps but also have young kids, I think the biggest thing that my wife and I did to, to help prepare Dacha for his camp experience was in the first you know, eight years of or seven years of his life, not let him do a lot of the really special things at camp that are that are reserved for being a camper. So look, I'm the waterfront director. I'm on the waterfront all day. Uh, so obviously he went swimming. I took him sailing. Um, and that, that was, that was plenty of fun. Um, as were the nature walks and other things that we did around camp and some of the low key things like, you know, play a game of wiffle ball. Um, and he just loved being on these beautiful acres on the shore of the lake. 
But he didn't go to archery, he didn't go to rifle, he didn't go to arts and crafts, he didn't do any of these things that um, became really special for him when he entered a cabin. So that made it, I think that made it really fun for him. And now, of course, my younger son is um, chomping at the bit and excited to go as well. But um, So my advice to all of, all, all of you camp professionals with families is try to reserve many of the special things at camp. Uh, for when your son or daughter is, you know, seven, eight, nine, and ready to be yeah. uh, a camper, so that'll really make it special. Well, that's great advice. We just talked two weeks ago about um, what it's like having adult relationships um, at camp and maintaining yeah. that, especially when your partner's not m- m- either involved in camp and as busy as you are, or yeah. not involved in camp and sort of you're balancing that out. But we had, didn't talk a lot about um what it's like or how to handle being kids at camp or having your kids at camp and getting them ready so that's that's good advice thank you um chris the reason i asked you here today was to talk about expert online training um your company that helps staff get ready for the summer and we're certainly in the season for it and I, i wonder if we could start at the beginning of that where did you see a need to say let's get some folks together and and start doing training that um, people can watch from home before they actually yeah. get to camp. Well, I was actually um, riding in a a car with Rob Hammond, who's the director of Camp Laney in Mentone, Alabama. He had picked me up at the airport to do a staff training. Um, and on our trip, he said, you know, Chris, um, how many how many camps do you visit in the time that you that you do this? Uh, and of course, staff training work is seasonal. Yeah. It's like picking berries. I'm busy between Memorial Day and the Fourth of July, um, and go to like you. I go to conferences, and like yeah. a lot of people watching this, I enjoy many of the off-season educational opportunities. But when it comes to training frontline staff, uh, people who do staff training workshops are in very high demand for a short period of time. And the common lament from camp directors is, you know. We can't necessarily get the person we want to come to our camp, but more commonly, we don't have enough time to do all the training that we would like in the time that we've got. And and as you know, different camps allot different periods of time to do their staff training, but I think almost every director of a day camp or a resident camp would say, (laughs) we jam it in, we shoehorn it in before opening day, but you know, I wish we had a couple more days. So Rob and I were talking about this, right? And you know, I said, I can visit about 22 camps in 35 days. And it, it, it's, it is, like we were talking about earlier, energizing and exhausting. And once I feel at the end, I should have some sort of concert T-shirt that has the names of all of the yeah. you know, venues where I've been <laughs> in the last month. But look, there aren't probably enough people doing what, you know, Steve McGuire and Scott Arizala and Michelle Cummings and Faith Evans and I do. Um, we love it. We love to visit these camps, but... Um, many more camps than there are professional staff trainers. Now, that said, many camp directors do an outstanding job with their senior staff training their frontline staff. But really what we're trying to do at Expert Online Training is address a time crunch. And so my goal with my co-founder, Evan Helte, was to assemble an expert faculty, people who have complementary areas of expertise, and let them deliver their best material in 10 minute segments and make those video segments available to camp staff you know, pre-season. So at this point we have 71 videos um, and a faculty of a dozen people, um, all headliners at national and regional conferences, and not just in camping, but in other areas of youth development. And they really do range from say, you know, Faith Evans, who has expertise in outdoor cooking and games and team building activities to Jack Erler, who is an attorney um, and does liability management and uh, has done modules for us like duty of care and alcohol beverage laws and, you know, preventing sexual harassment. So it's a pretty wide range of different things that are available. And the whole idea is it's, it's like having a library of um, books. You know, you have uh, your subscription to expert online training is like your library card. You have access to all the resources. And uh, we then hope that we're addressing this need that all camp directors have to provide more training. But we have taken care of the time crunch by making it available 
over the internet. So most camp staff who are college age, they're wrapping up their finals, and then they've got a few weeks before camp starts. What better way to spend a few hours than to look at camp-based videos that address issues of supervision, leadership, child development, that sort of thing. And Chris, is there a way for a camp director to test or to know that the staff has got the message that's that comes in the yeah. video? Well, first of all, test out the site by just going to it and looking at some of the videos for free. We also have opportunities to set up a free light account so that all of your staff can have an account and you have access to a few videos just to give the whole system a test drive. Yeah. Um, but then you're also asking a question about accountability. Right. And uh, camp directors from their dashboard, their web page um, on expert online training can look to see of their staff roster who's watched which videos, which staff have completed the assigned bundle of videos, what their quiz scores were. And, um, and then we have a dynamic uh, certificate printing system whereby staff can print a certificate of completion to show, you know, we hope that most staff stay with the camp uh, they start and enjoy a long tenure. But if they do move to another camp or take another job in youth development, uh, they can have this documentation uh, with them. And that's, you know, that's increasingly valuable. But yeah, it's a great learning management system that um, we've designed at Expert Online Training. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Because I'm sure directors want need need that reassurance that instead of just having the videos out there, that they have a way of knowing what their right. staff has to watch and who's watched what and what yeah, they've and got a lot out of it. Directors, you know, they they they'll design a customized bundle of modules, and um, and they, of course they watch them themselves, so they know what they're asking their staff to do. And I get a kick out of it because they'll say, "Chris, you know, it's the, it's the same thing that I've been telling my staff for years." But when somebody else says it, yes. you know, my staff <laughs> listen. And yeah, it's true. So we're we're addressing the time crunch that all directors feel, but also. The staff want a variety of different voices, and uh, I know as well as anyone, directors, um, you know, they get tired of standing up in the dining hall or the or the lodge and being the spokesperson for all of this content. So this takes a load off as well, and the documentation that directors can look at to see who's watched which modules and what their quiz scores were also identifies the areas of training that you want to revisit during your on-site right. training. Right? Yeah. Expert online training was never designed as a substitute for on-site training, but rather as a complement to on-site training. And a surprise benefit that we've heard directors tell us is, as I just mentioned, nice to have another voice delivering the same clear message, but also, hey, you know, it was great to see that everyone kept failing the safe touch quiz. So when it got to our on-site training, we wanted to show the video again up on the big screen or we wanted to do some role plays or we wanted to go over our policies again because we, we could identify by looking at the statistics online, this was a weak point for some of our staff, you know, and that's, that's helpful too. If you can design um, your on-site training around your staff's particular strengths and weaknesses, obviously you can do a better job, so. Right, right. Um, are there uh, some particular videos that um, you've got the best feedback on? Oh, that's a great question. We just ran those statistics. We we're looking at you know page views and people's comments. Um, I mentioned a minute ago, safe touch and safe yeah. talk. Yeah. That's the most popular. Um, and that's probably because everyone realizes they, they need to cover that content. Um, the second most popular uh, mutual friend of ours, Scott Arizala, um, Scott did a video called We Squashed It, which is um, collaborative problem solving. So, yes. you know, everybody wants some, everybody wants to teach their staff how to resolve conflicts. This is um, conflict resolution for high stress situations, uh, maybe even when things come to blows. So that's also very, very popular. And then the other most popular videos um, are on skillful discipline. Right. Uh, again, you know, all staff want to know. they. They know the obvious things like they know the obvious things such as, you know, we can't we can't withhold food or mail. We know we can't smack these kids. But when yeah. we get frustrated when they're not behaving, uh, what are the tools we have at our disposal? So those are the most popular. I'll say one other thing, too, which is really cool. Um, regardless of the video, our international staff tell us that they really enjoy looking at American or right. North American summer camps. And yep. Some of our videos were shot up where you are in yeah. Canada. The yeah. point is. Um, 
you have very enthusiastic international staff who are excited to do a wonderful job. They're grateful for the preseason training, but they're especially grateful for the acculturation that it gives them to see realistic scenes of what camp life you know, looks like in North America. Um, and they arrive with a little more confidence than they otherwise would have. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because for many international staff members, they have no concept having not grown up a camp. They have no real concept of what it is other than bad portrayals from movies. So it must right. be it for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Someday maybe I'll do a module on, uh, you know, the pop culture image of, of camps, you know, food fights, panty raids, crazed yes. killers. Uh, we're, uh, we're fighting this cultural tide, right? Uh, yeah. With uh, meatballs and daddy daycare and wet, hot American summer. And, yeah. and you're right, the, the pop culture image, the international image of American summer camp or Canadian summer camp is a, is a bit tarnished. I mean, these are funny movies, don't get me wrong, but yeah. they're, uh, suffice it to say that they're not great training videos. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Yeah. Uh, well, Chris, what's the best way for people to um, find out about expert online training, where to go for that, and to get one of those light accounts that you talked about? Oh, yeah. So, well, I encourage people, of course, I encourage people to visit the website, which is expertonlinetraining.com. And you can hear a little explanation by me of what the site's features and benefits are. Um, you can also watch some of the videos full length, take the quizzes. So that's 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 a 15-minute um sort of preview yep. just by visiting the site. But if you call the 800 number, which is 877-237-3931, one of our customer service folks, and we've got a whole team answering the phone, will be able to step you through a live demo. Um, people have lots of questions about how to assign groups and how to make bundles of modules and so forth. Um, but also you get access to all of the videos. And if you want uh, to set up a free light account. It, it, there are no strings attached. It's actually free. Um, and the only catch is that with a free light account, you have a limited number of videos that are available to your staff. Yes. But you get to test drive the learning management system. You get a fully functional director dashboard. Um, and if you have a circumscribed uh, content area like you want to have all your staff watch Kathy Shader's videos on lifeguarding, um, you can do that. Um, and the free light account um, is a really popular way for people to give the whole system a real test drive for a season. And if they like it, then they can subscribe. Cool. That's great. Well, Chris, thanks so much for being on Camp Hacker TV. It's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was fun to be here. I'm glad you gave me a call and I'm hoping that everyone has a fun and safe summer and that your staff are well trained. Yeah, awesome. Thanks very much, Chris. Okay, you bet. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.